Hello, children. Good afternoon. Welcome to KKC. Please put down your bag. Sit down. Look in front. Put down your bag. All right. Please put down your bag. Okay. I have one question. All right. How many of you are here at KKC every Sunday? Raise your hand. Praise the Lord. How many of you are here most of the Sundays? Raise your hand. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Okay, put down your hand. Now, children, another question. What do we do in KKC? Eh? Every Sunday you come, or most of the Sunday you come, what do we do here? Yes. Praise the Lord and pray to Him. Very good. Praise the Lord and pray to Him. What else? Anybody else? Play games. Play games. Oh, CK. Very good. What else? Learn about God. Yes, learn about God. What else? Do Holy, do holy Communion. Do Holy Communion, okay? Now, children, children. Children, look at me, look at me, look at me. There's still one thing uh, that we do here uh, that you did not mention. Maybe you didn't know. Do you know that we are all here to meet one very, very important person? Yes, we are here to meet Jesus. Do you know that Jesus is here with us now, now, now? Do you know that Jesus is with us now? You look around and see if Jesus is here. Can your eyes see him? Your eyes might not be able to see him. But, but he is here with us. Why I say he is here with us? Because the Bible says so. All right? The Bible, Jesus said this, you know, in the Bible. Jesus said it. Where in the Bible? Where in the Bible? It is in Matthew Chapter 18, verse 20. Look at the screen. What is said there? What is written? It says, Where two or three are gathered in my name. Whose name? Jesus. The name of Jesus. I am among them. Who is among them? Jesus. Jesus. Okay. Do we have more than two or three? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Are we gathering in the name of Jesus? Yes. So who is here? Jesus. Jesus is here. When Jesus is here, we are blessed. Can you remember the Bible story by Auntie Ellen last week? Auntie Ellen last week tell a Bible story about a man called Bartimaeus. Can he see? Did that right? Cannot right? When he met Jesus, what happened to him? He could see again. He could see again. Why? Because he called out to Jesus, Jesus, have mercy on me. And Jesus asked him, What do you want? And what did he say? I want to see. I want to see. So did Jesus heal him? Yeah. Mm. So Jesus is here. When Jesus is here, we are blessed. All right? So, I want to start off by inviting a little princess to open us with a word of prayer. Come, come, come. Thank you, Father God, for loving all of us. Thank you that you are here with us. Help us to pay attention and know you more. Bless all KKC teachers with the joy of teaching all of us. Bless our family too. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Okay, I pass the time to. Okay, children, are you ready to worship? Okay, listen to instruction. Put down all your bags. Okay? Okay. Get ready. All of you stand up. Okay, now let's do a little bit of exercise. Hop to where you should stand. 
and space yourself out. Ready, go! 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 Okay, spread yourself out. Spread yourself out. Okay. Okay, children. Is your God great? Is your God great? Is your God strong? Do you think you can trust God? Let me ask you. Does Jesus love you? Yeah. Okay, no need to scream so loud until ye. Okay, let us sing. Okay, let us praise God. With, okay, the words of all the songs that we have chosen is to tell God we love Him. He's our strength and we can trust in Him. So, ready? Miss David, are you ready? Miss Esther, are you ready? Okay, let's get ready. Spread. All the empat sekawan, please spread. Okay, ready? Okay, let's sing our first song. Let's clap our hands. I want everybody to sing. Huh? I will trust you, God, with all my heart. With all my heart, with all my heart, I will trust you, God. With all my heart, with all my heart, today again, I will trust you, God. With all my heart, with all my heart, with all my heart, I will trust you, God. With all my heart, with all my heart, today, I don't need to do things. Oh. Okay, as you do the sign language, remember the words of the song and the sign. Hey! 
Sometimes we make mistakes, we make do things that make God unhappy. But God still loves you, but He doesn't love the actions that you do. You understand? God loves the sinner, but God loves the sinner but hates the sin. Do you understand? So after us, even when we take communion after us, okay, let's tell God we are sorry for little little things that we may have carelessly done. Even uh, at home or in school. So our last song is, we need God's strength. Day in, day out, we need God's strength. The giant teachers, do you need God's strength? Yes. Little children, do you need God's strength? Yes. Everyone needs God's strength. Tell, make this our prayer. Make this our prayer. Hands, children. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. 
Thank you for taking my sins on the cross. Thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us. Help us to grow stronger and stronger, deeper and deeper in love with you and in love with your word. Help us to take home a lesson from you this day from start to finish of KKC. We bless you. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Okay. Okay, children, quietly go back to your place. Okay. Children, today before we take the Holy Communion, I just want to say something, okay? You know, communion, we always say Holy Communion, okay? Holy because it involves God who is righteous. But communion, communion, what do you want to learn from this word today, okay? Communion is the sharing or exchanging of close, private, personal thoughts or feelings. You know this word, ah? you say, oh, Holy Communion, Holy Communion. But do you really understand what it means or not? Here, ah, there's three very, very, very intimate. Intimate means very, very quiet, very, uh, very... Uh, very subtle word, very the word that nobody think of it much. It is a very personal, close, something that it is not like everybody tell everybody. Understand not? Communion is only when you have a close friend, you will talk to your close friend. Or you have a very uh, good relationship with somebody, then you will be able to have communion with this person. So today, even as we take the Holy Communion, it is an exchanging, exchanging God's righteousness with our sin. And is it just because of anybody? Is it God says, okay, are you? Are you, 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 you? Come. Is God calling you like that? No. How does God call? In the Bible, huh, God called his disciples, isn't it? Ah, he called Shen Shen, uh, Wingy, Amanda, Delvin, Wailing, Sauket, Andrew, Ezekiel. He called like that, isn't it? He doesn't call, okay, you, that woman there, that lady there. God doesn't call like that. So when we have communion with God, with Jesus, it is a very close, very private, very personal. Means it's between God and who? God and who? God and you. God and you. It's not God and so and so and so. It is between God and you. Just like when Jesus called his disciples, Jesus is calling all of you now. Those who want to follow after Jesus, God is calling you. Those who say yes to the calling of Jesus, can you stand up? Those who, call, those who answer to Jesus' call, stand up. Did Jesus call you to be his disciple? Did you say the sinner's prayer that, yes, Jesus, I want to follow after you? Did God call you and you say yes? If you did, then you stand up. You understand? You understand my question? Ah. Means when God says, when teacher asks, who are those who want to accept Jesus as their personal God and Savior? And they say, yes, I want to follow after Jesus. Those who already said the sinner's prayer, you stand up. This is the personal com relationship that you have. It doesn't mean that my friends stand up, I stand up. My sister say, I stand up, I stand up. Teacher say, I stand up, I stand up. Daddy say, I stand up, I stand up. 
No, it is between you and God. And this is very serious, very personal. Means uh, if you stand up, you must stand up properly. It's serious business. Not stand up like that. Hey, this is serious because God is serious. God wants us to do what is right. So even as we commit ourselves, uh, remember, it is not play play. And when we commit to Jesus, we don't commit today. Tomorrow, I don't feel like it. Uh, tomorrow, I'm not in good mood. No, it is a commitment to stay. Means once you say you want to follow after Jesus, you must keep to it. You must follow until the end. It is not easy. Was Jesus' life easy or not? No, it was never easy. So when we follow after Jesus, we also will have to walk what Jesus did. We have to love those who are not lovable. We have to do what is right even though what is not right is more enjoyable. That, it, that is what it takes. Okay? So the other thing I want to ask you is, you know all of us have seen, isn't it? Those who have not seen, put up your hand. I dare not put up my hand because I have always done what is not right. Sometimes uh, when you do, when you do not do what is right, that is already something no good. If, if God says you have to listen, but today, I just choose not to listen. If teacher or mommy or even uh, God will tell you through your Holy Spirit, don't fight with your friend. But when you call your friend's name, you fight with your friend, is that right or wrong? Wrong. That is already a sin. So when I ask who does not sin, I will dare not put up my hand. Isaac, have you, have you ever done something that you know it is not right? Yes, sir. So do you think that is wrong? Yes, sir. So do you think you have sinned? Yes, sir. So when I ask those who have not seen, put up your hand, should you put up your hand? Didak. Yeah, okay. You learn well. So children, we must know, we must acknowledge, okay? Acknowledge God's sacrifice. Sacrifice for what? For all the bad things that we have done. Do you know that I always tell people, if let's say I say, ah, Devin, I don't think you should talk so loudly, but Example, uh, but Delvin said, No, uh, it's not loud. That's how I talk. Then Delvin will not see why she need to change because I didn't do anything wrong. But if, let's say, uh, Delvin said, Yeah, uh, I think it's a bit loud. Uh, then I should change and talk softer. Example, uh, Delvin. Uh, uh, okay? So I know Delvin will understand. That's why uh, you have to acknowledge, you have to admit before you know you need change, correct or not? If I don't admit I, I'm doing something wrong, then why should I change? I just continue to do what I know is right, correct or not. So that's why when we have this communion, one very important is we want to do it because it's personal. It's between me and God. No other people can tell me to do or not to do. And the other thing is we must acknowledge, we must accept that we need forgiveness that's why we need Jesus to forgive us. We need God to send Jesus to die for our sins. So two things, the acknowledgement must come. If you cannot acknowledge, then it doesn't mean anything. That is why when we take Holy Communion, we want you all to understand. When you understand, then you will know what you should do. Okay? And one of the things that you should do is you will acknowledge, you will admit Admit that, yes, I need forgiveness. Yes, I have done wrong. Just like what Isaac did just now. Isaac said, yes, I have sinned. Okay? Sin doesn't mean you kill somebody, you have sinned. It doesn't mean you steal somebody's things, you have sinned. Sin is something that you do that doesn't please God. It can be little things. It can be something that is in your heart. You don't say it out. Your daddy, your mommy don't know. Teachers don't know. But God knows. And all these things are is already seen even before you do it. So children, it is so, so important to know what is the right thing to do, correct or not. Last week, we learned about Jesus is, God is powerful. Powerful to the extent we don't need to say or do it and He already know. So children, even as before we do anything, 
Let us remember, let us think, will this please God or not? Then only we will do it. If it doesn't please God, then we better don't do it. Okay? So children, those who have acknowledged that they need God's forgiveness and they have accepted it, can you come to the front? This is an action. You have to do it. You cannot just wait for God's forgiveness like that. You have to step forward. You have to accept and acknowledge and admit, yes, I need. So there's an action. That's why today I want you all to come forward, to step out. So to show that, yes, I am making the decision now for myself. That's why I want you all to come to the front. Those who have already accepted, but those who are not sure, maybe you can ask, uh, confirm with a teacher, okay? Okay, so even as, even as you are standing out here, while waiting for the teacher to pass the bread and the wine, can you just spend this time to reflect the past week, maybe just now? Is there anything that I have done that I forget to ask for God to forgive me? Forgiveness comes every day. God's forgiveness is new every day. means no matter how many times you have done something wrong, God will continue to forgive you. You just need to admit and to ask for His forgiveness. So if you have taken the bread and the cup, just hold on to it. Don't look at your bread. Don't play. Don't talk to your friend. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and ask God, God, is there anything that I have done this week that is not pleasing to you? Help me. Show me so that I will stop doing it, so that my life will glorify you, will show God's love around us. Okay, every time, everybody just spend this time. Ask God to show us how to be a better person, how to be a better child of God. Okay, like I say, it's serious time. Okay, it's between you and God. Nothing to do with your friend or your teacher or whoever. Today is just like many years ago when Jesus spent this time with his disciples. Today, we are Jesus' disciples. Even as we reflect on how he has suffered for the punishment that we deserve, let it not be just a story that we hear from the Bible. This is something personal to us. This is something that we should imagine that we are there when Jesus was suffering. And we must remember that he was hung on the cross for you and you and you and not for the people that was with him many, many years ago. He hung on the cross for each and every one of us. That is how personal it is when we take this Holy Communion. Okay? So even while they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, Jesus always gave thanks. Even though he suffered, but he thanked God he has the opportunity to be part of God's work, to save God's people. And he broke and gave it to his disciple, saying, take this, this is my body. You know, this is just a piece of bread. But we do not look at the bread. We look at the suffering of God and we take it upon ourselves. Means we are ready to suffer like Jesus. We may not be hung on the cross, but when Jesus was hung on the cross, He is suffering on our behalf. So we should feel the pain with Him because it is the pain that we should suffer, not Jesus. Okay? So when He says, this is my body, means we are to share in His suffering and also in His victory. So let us take this break together. And Jesus continued, He said, Then He took a cup, and when He had given thanks, He gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant. This is not Jesus' blood. This is the blood of the covenant. It's a promise, which is poured out for many, not just for the disciples many years ago. It is for each and every one of us here today. And He said, Drink this cup until the day He comes. So let us take of this drink together. Okay, so children, even as now we remember that Holy Communion is a time where we spend not 
with KKC teachers, not in KKC, but it's the time between God and us. Let us remember, not just once a month, but every day, remember what He has done for each and every one of us. And remember that how we should continue to remember this so that we will do what is right, so that Jesus' death is not wasted. Just imagine somebody is punished for you and you continue to live a sinful life. Okay, so children, shall we pray and ask God to help us to remember what He has done? All eyes closed. We will pray together. Father God, we want to thank you for reminding us of your love on the cross so many years ago. Even as we partake of the communion today, let us recall not what happened so many years ago, but every day we remember your sacrifice for us. Help us to do what is right so that we know you have loved us and we will love you back. Teach us to do what is right. Help us to love people around us too. We want to thank you that you can forgive us over and over again. Help us to do what is right. Tell us when we do something wrong that the Holy Spirit prompt us to stop and turn away from the wrong things that we are doing or thinking. Thank you, God, that we can, that we can have the hope to know that you forgive us no matter how many times we will fail you. Thank you for loving us and never giving up on us. May we learn to be a better person so that people around us will know that you are a God who loves. Thank you, God. We submit our, ourselves unto you. Guide us and teach us. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Okay, so children, uh, pass the cups to your teachers. And remember, uh, Holy Communion is not just once a month. Hi, children. Okay, can you remember, children, children? Look to the front, look to the front. Don't talk to your friend. Can you remember who is here? Yes, Jesus is here. Our eyes cannot see him, but he can see us. But when Jesus is here, it's a blessing, right or not? Okay, so you come to church, just now you say, you come to church, you worship, you sing praises to God, and you learn about God, right? Right or not? And you have Holy Communion, right? So now, today, we are going to learn something that is very important, okay? We are here to learn and to love God. Jesus is here. And Jesus wants to teach us a lot of things. Because if you know Jesus well, you are blessed. Okay, today, we want to learn something that all of us, all of us, that means children and teachers, we all of us have it. And this something is very, very important in life. Okay? Some people will have a lot. Excuse me? Some people will have less. Some people will have very little. But this is very important in life. If you have very little, what will happen? 
Ah, I tell you the happy news. The happy news is that you can increase it. That means those who have little, you can increase it to more. Those who have more, you can increase it even to more. And those who have a lot, you can increase even more. So, are you interested in knowing how to increase it? Those who said uh, you are interested, please put up your hand. Can I see your hand? Those interested in increasing it, because this is very important in life. A uh, teacher, some teacher no need ah. Uh. Wow, teacher very great lah. Uh. <laughs> okay, sorry, just a joke. Okay, put down your hand. Now, if you are interested in increasing it, you must pay attention. Can you remember this little princess pray for us? What did she say? Jesus, please help us to pay attention. Right or not? So Jesus is here to help you to pay attention. So listen to the end. If you want to increase this something that is very important in life. Okay, let me ask you a question. Children, if I say, uh, if I say, uh, Esther, please carry this downstairs. Do you think you can carry? No, right? It's very heavy. If I say, Coco Andrew can move this stack of chair to the back or not? Coco Andrew can or not? Coco Andrew say can. Uh. So, Children cannot, isn't it? Okay, to carry this and to move this, what do you need? You need strength. Very good. You need strength. Now, just now I say to carry this and to carry this, you need strength. And this is called physical strength. Today, Auntie wants to tell you not about physical strength. Today, Auntie wants to tell you about another type of strength that all of us need. All means who? Is it only the children? Everybody in the world. Is it including the teachers? Ah, so teachers and children have to listen very good and pay attention. You know why we need this or not? This type of strength, huh? this type of strength that I'm going to talk about will help you to face problems and difficulties in life. Hey, children, got difficulties or not, you people? Got, huh? Teachers, got difficulties or not? Teachers, do you face difficulties in life? Got, huh? You don't have, huh? Okay, let me see, yeah. Hey, children got difficulties like this or not, ah? Uh? Homework, a lot, very difficult. Little bit, ah? Uh? Can still face it, ah? Uh? Okay, what about this one? Wow, tests and examinations. Maybe some people is a is a problem, right? Some people not a problem. Okay, different people have different problems, okay? Some can face it, some cannot face it. Now, now, now. Hey, maybe some of you uh, have no problem with test and examination. What about this? Test result day. That means you are going to get a test result. Some of you will be what? Shivering. Oh, I want to get 100 marks, but I don't know whether I can or not. Then some of you will be what? You have stomach ache, la. you suddenly think you got headache, la. you suddenly tell your mommy, la. mommy, I got fever, I don't want to go. La. Right, no. uh, you don't want to go exams, right? So, these are some of the problems. Do you know or not, some, ad some adults also got problems like this, you know. The adults also need to go for tests, you know. Hey, let's ask Coco Andrew. Uh, see whether Coco Andrew go for tests or not. Uh. Coco Andrew, how? Uh? Uh, same, yeah. When I have exams and tests, I'll be uh, very afraid. <laughs> ah, is it a problem to you, Nana Coco? Yes. 
Yes. Yeah. Ah, see, Coco also got problem. Ah. So we need, we need a type of strength to help us. Maybe some of you don't have this problem. See whether you got this problem or not. No friends. Oh. You cannot join a group of people. People are playing, but you cannot go in. You are always alone, sitting alone. Now, did you want to tell you something? Ah? Listen, listen, children. Did God make us to live alone? No, no right? We should have friends. So, life alone, ah, not interesting one, not enjoyable. So, we must have friends. But children, do you know or not? Some people ah, got problem making friends. Alright? Some, uh, they are shy. They don't know how to, you know, to go and make friends. They don't know how to talk to friends. Now, maybe you don't have friend problem. You have another one. Maybe some people say, hey, your teacher asks you to do something. You say, I'm not good enough. It is not that you are not good enough, but you are afraid. Okay? That thing becomes a big problem to you. It becomes a heel to you. But if you have this one thing inside you, then you will solve the problem. Then you can rise up to it. Another thing is what some people say, I know it's good for me. I just don't want to do it. You know it's good for you, you know. But your feeling is that, uh, I don't want to do it. I cannot do it. I don't want to do it. Hey, if it is good for you, why is it that you don't want to do it? Please pay attention. Okay, Jesus is here with us and Jesus wants us to learn so that we can face problems and difficulties in life and come out weak or strong. Come out strong. Okay? So these are some of the problems that maybe we will face or many, many others. Your daddy and your mommy also got problems. Or teachers, all the coco, the aunties here also have problems. So we need this one thing to help us face problems and difficulties in life. What is this? Inner strength. Eh, apa ini ya? Inner strength. Ah? Mm, let's see ya. Eh? Inner strength is something inside you, the ability to face problems and difficulties in life. Hey, children, have you heard or not? Some children, uh, they commit suicide. They don't want to live anymore. Why? Because they have problems that they cannot solve. They got difficulties they can't face. Or some children... They are depressed. Why? Because there are problems and difficulties that they cannot solve. You know, they can't face. We need what you call inner strength. Now, just now I said, huh? not everybody faces the same problem. Huh? Okay? And sometimes, some people have a lot of inner strength. Some people have not so much. Some people have very little. But can we do something? Can we increase it? Ah, good. So, how can we increase it? Now, ask God. Okay. Wait, huh? Hey, children, let me ask you. Uh, if you have a lot of inner strength already, uh, is it that you don't need any more? Is it that you don't need to increase anymore? Do you know, as we grow, sometimes our inner strength, uh, we are here, and then suddenly our inner strength go down, you know. And then we are not careful or go down some more, you know. Then after that, maybe go up again, you know. And then go up. Let me tell you afterward, huh? You listen to the... So, and then you go down again. Sometimes can be like that, you know. So, children... Is, don't think that now you have, you can face the problems that you face now and then in the future you still can face it. Sometimes, no. So, 
we come to the very important part. How to how do we get ourselves stronger inside? Or how do we get inner strength? How? Are you interested in knowing? Are you interested? Yes, huh? All right. Let's see what is the first one. I think some of you already mentioned some. But let's look at this first, all right? This first, the first one. Invite Jesus into your life. Okay, children, why do I say you invite Jesus into your life? Because the Bible tells us that God is our strength and God will strengthen us. When you have Jesus in your life, okay, God is your heavenly Father. And if God is your heavenly Father, God will take care of you. He will give you the strength. He will give you the strength so that you can face problems, difficulties, and come out strong, okay? So, those who already have Jesus in your life, remember this one thing, that God is your heavenly Father. And if He is your Father, you can go to Him when he, you have problems. He is your strength. Understand or not? Okay? Sometimes we have God inside us, you know. We already invited Jesus into our life. But then, when we have a problem, uh, we forget that we can run to God, you know. Then, what do we do when we forget to run to God? We cry, la, we become angry, la, we become irritated, la, we become very moody, la, right or not? When you have invited Jesus into your life, Jesus, the Lord, is your Father. You can always go to Him. And the Bible says, God is your strength, and God gives you strength. He will help you. Okay? Another point. I think some already did mention this. Pray and ask Jesus for help. When you have a problem you think is so, so big that you cannot face, okay, run to God. Even if you are crying, you can go to God. God knows already. And God will still love you even if you are crying. You can go to God crying. Oh God, you know, Father, I have this problem. I have this friend who is a problem. I don't know why I cannot mix with this friend. Please help me. You can cry. God will still love you. God don't, don't look at you and say, yeah, why cry, baby? Every time come here, also cry. Go away. God won't say this. Our God is a good God. Our God is a very kind God. And our God is a God who understands you more than your daddy and your mommy. Okay? So, hey, do you know how to pray and ask Jesus for help or not? Huh? Yes? Yes or not? Uh, Sun Sen knows. Princess Sun Sen knows because she or just now she prayed. So, prayer it is what? Talking to? God. God and Jesus. Uh, talking to? God and Jesus. One, all right? So remember, you can go to God and just tell God your problem. All right? Then what is the next one that help, can help you increase strength? Yes! Reading the Bible. Right? Hey, why do we need to read the Bible? Huh? Why do we need to read the Bible? To learn about God. Yes, yeah, so that you can know more about God. Because when you know more about God, you will know what God can do, you know. Because if you don't read the Bible, uh, you don't know what God can do. So you think your problem is so big that God cannot help you. But when you read the Bible, you will know God. You will know that God is very kind. You will know that God is very merciful. You will know that God is very loving. That you will know that 
you can call to God. All right? Now, we, every week, Sunday, we come here, huh? teachers tell us Bible stories, right? So, when we listen to the stories, when we read the Bible, we store God's story in our heart. We might sometimes forget, but remember, all those who have Jesus in their life, you have the Holy Spirit in you. The Holy Spirit in you will remind you so that in future when you face a problem, the Holy Spirit will tell you, will remind you. You remember that passage? You remember that? Bartimaeus, he was blind, but God healed him, you know? So that's how great our God is. Then, when you find out that God, your God is so big, your Father, your Heavenly Father is so kind, so almighty, you have faith and you have confidence. So when you have faith and confidence, you will rise up. You will conquer your problem. You will come out what? Strong. Strong. Amanda, can you say strong? Loud. Strong. Loud. Strong. Strong. Okay. The next one. Worship and sing praises. Every Sunday, we come out here, right? Now, children, I want you to listen carefully, children. Every Sunday, we come out here, like today, Mrs. C was held up here. Hey, are we dancing or not? Are we just dancing? No. Let me ask you a question. Huh? Singing. Singing to who? Singing to God. Singing to Jesus. Singing to God. We worship God. So, children... 我们出来这边不是跳舞啊。我们出来这边就是赞美神啊。We come out here is not dancing. We are praising God. So children, next time, next Sunday, when you go out there, don't play. Don't play. Worship God. Worship God. We are not dancing. We are not dancing for people to see. Even if we are dancing, we are dancing to the Lord. Sometimes you see that Auntie Susan dancing up there, isn't it? Auntie Susan is not dancing to show you, you know. Auntie Susan is dancing to worship God. Understand this or not? Now, worship is not only singing praises. Worship is also you sitting here and listening to the lessons. The stories are stories that God put in the Bible to tell all of us. So, we must listen, we must respect God. And the last one in my list, there are many, but I put it only five. Fellowship. Fellowship means what? You mix with, eh, you mix with who? God's people, huh? Eh, not anybody, you know. When you mix with bad people, you also become bad because they influence you. So, you must work, mix with God's people. Hey, why must mix with God's people? Huh? Ah, so you can do the right thing because when you see your friend doing the right thing, then you know. When you see your friend doing the wrong thing, and God speak to you, uh, then you know that you shouldn't do that. Right or not? That means you mix with God's people so that you learn from one another and so that you help each other. Therefore, children, therefore, children, this is important. Come to KKC every Sunday. Come to KKC every Sunday because in KKC, we have what? We have prayer, we ask Jesus for help, we read the Bible, we worship, we sing praises, and we mix with God's people. So, children, I am really so impressed by those who are here every Sunday and most of the Sundays. And also the teachers. 
Why? Because you choose God. You choose to come, right? Ah. And hey, not only auntie is impressed, you know. Do you know or not? Yes. Jesus is very impressed. Because uh, every time when we gather like this, uh, who is here? Jesus is here, isn't it? Then Jesus will see. Ah, he come. Ah, she come this week. Ah, last week she was here. Ah, last week she was here. Now she's here. Jesus is very happy. Can you remember the story by Auntie Ellen? The blind man, Bartimaeus. What did he, he, he call? He called Jesus, you know. Jesus, have mercy on me. And what did Jesus do for him? Heal him. Right or not? So, when Jesus is here with you, we are all blessed. Alright? So, children, remember these seven things, uh, five things, okay? Who are those who want inner strength? You want to increase your inner strength? Put up your hand, including the teachers. Teachers don't need it, then it is okay. Alright? So, can I, okay, thank you, please put down your hand. Can I invite you to read out one, two, three, four, five, okay? One way is, number one is what? Ask. Mm. Invite Jesus into your life. Those who don't have Jesus, invite Jesus into your life. If you don't know how to do it, you go and ask the teachers. The teachers will be more than happy to help you. Number two. Pray and ask Jesus for help. Mm. Number three. to KKC every Sunday. And also, uh, remember, uh, when you come out here to worship, uh, don't talk to your friend. Uh, don't kick up your shoes. Uh, okay? And don't disturb your friend. Because Jesus is in our midst. We come out here, we worship. We come out here, we sing praises. And that is important. We must honor Jesus when Jesus is in our midst. Okay? Thank you very much, children. Today, we are going to continue about the story of David and Goliath. Who has heard of this story before? Yes, okay. Those who know, keep quiet first. We will watch together with our friends and then we will find out what we are going to learn from this Bible story. Okay, children? God's story, David and Goliath. So part of God's story is about the time David fought Goliath. And it begins like this. David was the youngest of eight brothers. His job was being a shepherd, which meant he spent all day in a field watching sheep eat and roll around the grass. Meanwhile, some of his brothers were off with the Israeli army preparing for war against the Philistines. The Philistines were one of the toughest armies the people of Israel had to fight. So one day, David was taking food to his brothers because his dad asked him to. But when he got there, his brothers accused him of coming so he could watch the fight instead of the sheep. Since David knew in his heart he was just obeying his dad, he didn't mind being misunderstood. Anyway, while David was there, he saw a huge Philistine man, more than nine feet tall, step onto the field between the two armies. He was wearing a thick helmet and armor and carrying huge weapons. His name was Goliath, and he was definitely used to being the winner. David found out that Goliath had been stepping onto the field like this every morning for the past 40 days and saying, Give me a man and let us fight each other. But nobody from Israel was brave enough to fight him, even the king. Well, David didn't like that this giant was intimidating the Israelites. After all, they were God's special family. And because God was with the Israelites, they could have courage in any situation. So David, who wasn't even a soldier, told the king, I'll fight against him. Now, nah, the king thought David was too small, but he really wanted someone to fight Goliath. So he gave in. And David knew he wasn't strong enough to beat Goliath by himself, but he believed God would be with him. So he said, the Lord will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. The king hoped David was right. He even had his own weapons and armor put on David. 
but they didn't fit him. David decided to go into battle in his regular clothes. That's how sure he was that God would help him. Anyway, David went to a nearby stream and chose five smooth stones to use with his slingshot. Then he walked onto the battlefield to meet the massive Goliath. When Goliath saw how wimpy David looked, he was furious. He thought he'd get to fight the Israelite's strongest warrior. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. David might have looked like a wimp, but he was actually really brave. In fact, he was so brave that when he was taking care of sheep, he fought off bears and lions. Because God helped him protect his sheep, David knew God would help him protect this special family. David said, you come at me with a sword, but I come at you with the name of the Lord Almighty. He was explaining to Goliath that God was more powerful than anything. He also added that he would feed Goliath's flesh to the birds, which made the giant even more mad. Then David took a stone, put it in the slingshot, and slung it at Goliath. Goliath didn't even get a chance to swing a sword because the stone hit him right in the forehead and sunk in deep. He face planted straight into the ground. Nobody could believe it. Then David ran over, took hold of the giant's sword, and drew it from the sheath. He took the sword and cut off Goliath's head. David carried the head all the way back to Jerusalem. And when the Philistine army realized Goliath was dead, they started running away like a bunch of scaredy cats. The Israelites chased the Philistines, shouting loudly. They had won. God used David, who was just an average kid, to rescue his people. And that's the story of David and Goliath. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. David was a shepherd. He brought his brother's lunch. He saw Goliath. Goliath scared everybody. David wasn't scared. He knew God was stronger. David fought Goliath. He used one stone. God helped him kill Goliath. The Israelites won. God's people were saved. And that's a part of God's story. David is a young boy. Ah, Delvin said he was a shepherd. Do you all agree? Yes, huh? What does a shepherd do? Take care of sheep, correct? Yeah, so he is not a soldier. So one day, David brought some food to his brothers who were soldiers. Okay. David and his brothers, uh, they were Israelites. Okay. And they were fighting against the Philistines. Okay. So in the soldiers among the Philistines, uh, there's a huge man. His name is Goliath. Okay. If you see someone as big as that, uh, will you be afraid? No, uh. Sure. Okay. So, some of you said you might not, you are not afraid. Maybe because, because you have God in you already. Okay? So, like David, uh, they are small little children like you, but he was not afraid. He was willing to go and fight Goliath. Okay? So, he went to King Saul and told him that he volunteers to fight Goliath. Okay? So, Goliath brought out his sword, okay, and wanted to fight with David. Meanwhile, David, did he prepare his sword and all that? No. Uh, David found some stones from the river uh, uh, and used a sling. Do you all know what a sling is? Yes. Uh, okay, if you have a sling at home, you can try, but it is dangerous uh, to use a stone uh, and shoot at someone. Okay, so David used this stone and it hit Goliath on the forehead in between the eyes. And Goliath died. Okay, so David had God with him. Okay, do you think if David, uh, I mean when David has God with him, he's able to fight the giant. If he has no God in him then, I'm sure the giant would have killed off all the Israelite soldiers, right? Which are much smaller in size. Okay. So, what Auntie Amelia said is true. Huh? Even children as young as you, we all have difficult situations. Okay? Sometimes we may not say it, but there are times when we face difficulties. Okay? All sorts of difficulties from A to Z. Okay? But 
we feel sometimes we have no one to help us. You ask your daddy, mommy also, they cannot help you. You ask your teachers also, they cannot help you. But who can help you? Ah, only one answer. The rest? Who will help you? God. Yeah, God is with us. Because when God is with us, we have this inner strength that we will be able to overcome all the situations. Difficult situations, you will be able to overcome. Okay? Children, so now you know the story of David and Goliath and you'll be able to tell it to your friends? Yes. Ah, okay. So, remember, ah? Alright. So, thank you. Hey, children, what's the time? I mean, what are we to do now? After the Bible story? Say the what? Oh, maybe you are. Ah, lao sir, zao liao. Yeah, very good memory verse. What do you think the memory verse will be about? What have we been talking about the whole time? Very good, very attentive. Okay, can you, we all read together? One, two, three. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. From where? Psalms. 31 verse 24. Okay, be strong. Show me how when you are strong. <clears throat> hey, not angry. Strong. Ah. <laughs> Got muscles. Show all your muscles. All the low si chai here. No muscles. Oh, nah. Ayyo, wah. Very small. Oh. Ah. Ah, okay. And take heart. Take courage. Okay. All you who hope in the Lord, who trust in the Lord. Where is it taken from? This verse? Psalms 31, verse you know where is the book of Psalms or not in your Bible? Yeah. Where? Somewhere in the middle of the Bible, okay? Now you're no Old Testament. Uh, uh, now you're, I think you use digital, I uh, don't know. <laughs> anyway. Okay, do you know what animal is this? Wow, so clever, Esther, David, and Swain. How does the sloth move? Yes, Jaden? Very, very slow. Slower. Okay, so I want you to read the verse uh, as slowly as a sloth moves. Cannot. Cannot. Ooh, wake up, wake up. Hey. Cannot. What's a sloth? The animal. The animal. Okay? It moves very slowly, okay? So you must read very, very slowly, okay? Okay. One, two, three. Be strong and take heart all Next animal is what? Cheetah. How come you're so smart, Anna? Cheetah goes very fast or like a sloth like that? Ah, you're supersonic like that, huh? Okay, so uh, we're going to read very fast, okay? Get ready, get set, go! Ah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear anything. Again. One, two, three. Be strong in the Lord and take heart. All you hope in the Lord. Psalm 31 verse 24. Hey, Amanda didn't say. Amanda shock. Amanda, can you be like a cheetah? Say fast, fast. Ready? Go. Be strong and take heart. All you hope in the Lord. Psalm 31 verse 24. Okay. This is a sleepy cheetah, okay? Okay, what, what animal is this? 
Wow, very good, George. Okay, so all of you have to jump, hop, hop like a kangaroo as you say, okay? Ready? Not yet. I said ready only. Okay, must say also, okay? Don't just hop. Must say also, okay? Ready, go. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Psalms 31 verse 24. Who didn't read? Ah? Eh, the one jumping in front of me. <laughs> Must read also. I don't want you to be a kangaroo. I want you to say like a kangaroo. Okay, never mind. Next. Na -na 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 -na. What is it? Someone you mentioned before, right? Just now. No la. Tortoise or turtle. Okay? This one not as slow as a sloth, okay? But also slow, okay? Not, not too slowly, but slow, okay? Ready? Go. Be strong and take heart, all you who hope in the Lord. Psalms 31, verse 24. Okay. Who can remember that verse? Who would like to come and te tell us? Hey, read, ah. Uh. Tell me, ah. Uh. Cannot, Joel? Who? Adrian cannot. Sami, are you sure you can? I won't help you, one, no. <laughs> Esther, Esther cannot. Huh? Okay, Shen Shen. Uh, come, what strength? The verse, ah. Uh. Oh. Ah, uh, okay, try. Be strong and, and take heart. You, uh, yeah, you, what? you who hope in, who? in the Lord. Who is the Lord? God. God? God, Jesus. Ah, Jesus. Okay, where is it taken from? Psalm 31, <laughs> verse 24. Oh, excellent. Anybody else? One more? Okay, Jaden. See it. Like a bear, like that, okay? Strong and courageous. Please say loudly, loudly. Be strong and take heart. And take heart oh. all you who hope in the Lord. Psalm 31 verse 24. Okay, good. The tiny bear is helping him. <laughs> okay, thank you. Today we are going to talk about how God, how we gain inner strength. This paper is like us, not very strong and very wobbly. And then I'm going to put this paper out of these two boxes. And then this bottle represents our problems. Sometimes we may face challenges or, or problems in life. If I put this here, can it? Which one is stronger? Do you think the paper or the bottle is stronger? Huh? Which one is stronger, the bottle or the paper? Really, man? Really? <laughs> yeah, the paper is like us. Not very stable and not very strong. Now, children, can you tell me what we must do to gain inner strength? What are the things we must do to gain inner strength? Ah, praying. Pray. Just now you learn it, just now. Yes. Ah, invite Jesus into your oh, life, pray. Other people, other children. <laughs> ah, read the Bible. Please go back, go back, okay. The Bible. And what else? What else? What about other children? Just now you learn, you know. Fellowship with God's people. Fellowship, yes, with, fellowship God's with God's people. people. Yes. Worship and sing praises. Worship and sing praises. Very good. Amanda, can you remember how to increase inner strength? Yes, read the Bible. Very Bible. good. One more, one more. And what about you? How to 
Pray to God. Ask pray Jesus to for God. help. Ah, come to KKC every Sunday. So I see you every Sunday. Yeah? Now that we have all these inner strength in ourselves, like going to KKC, praying, reading the Bible, and then, do you think our problems yeah, not, not. cannot, can, cannot, will drop or not? No. <laughs> okay. Thank you, JJ. Yay! Hey, hey, say thank you to JJ la, because uh, JJ uh, first time doing an uh, object okay. lesson must encourage her. La. Thank you! Okay, now, children, children, sit down, sit down, sit down. Okay, children, now, the lesson that we learned today will help all of you. All of us need inner strength, all right? You learn about how to build inner strength. God has promised us that He will help us. So, those who don't have Jesus, invite Jesus into your life. If you don't know, go and see the teachers, or go and see Koko, or go and see the Jeje or the aunties, okay? And then you pray and ask Jesus for help. And you read the Bible. And you listen to the stories. Hey, just now, uh, what story did Coco and Jude? David and Goliath. David and Goliath. Hey, David, uh, was he afraid of the giant or not? No. You, you, you think David is uh, so, so strong? Uh? No, God. Ah, he has God, that's why he can face Goliath. Children, you will have Goliaths in life. Your Goliaths are all your problems. The teachers will also have Goliaths in life. So we need Jesus. So read the Bible, and when you come here, listen carefully, attentively, okay? So... Worship and sing praises. Don't go out there and play. We go out there to worship. And number four, we fellowship. We mix with who? We mix with anybody in the market? Ah? No. God's people. God's people. Ah? Hey, where is one place you can get God's people? Ah? KKC. Ah, KKC. Ah. So children, ah, you, you can give me a very good answer. Ah. Please, ah, don't only... Say, uh, but must do. Datang ke KKC every Sunday. Jangan pergi mana-mana. Come to KKC. Koko Andrew is here. All the aunties, the jeje are here. Okay? So, children, let's pray before we go off. I want everybody to bow your head and everybody to be quiet. No moving around. Because we are talking to God. And God deserves all our respect. Okay? I don't, want everybody, I don't want anybody to be fidgeting around. Bow your head, close your eyes. Okay? Let's pray. Father God, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you that you are here with us. We want to thank you that you love us. Even when we are not lovable. Even when we make mistakes, we don't have to be afraid. We can go back to you. Even when we don't have strength to face our problems, we can always go to you. And you are that father who will listen to us, who will help us, who will teach us. Help us to be teachable children, obedient children, and help us, O oh God, to be obedient to our parents our, and respect our parents too. Father, even as we go home from now, protect us and bless us and bless our family. Bless all the teachers and bless everybody. Lord, we want to go in your presence and we want your presence to be with us. In Jesus' name, all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Thank you, children. All right.